Chapter 4. Leisure. In both childhood and adulthood, going to the cinema was a favourite leisure activity. There were two cinemas in Wensfield, the Ideal in Rookery Street, popularly known as The Smack, and The Regal in the High Street. The Ideal had originally been built as a Methodist chapel in 1852. It was converted into the Electric Theatre in 1912, and a decade or so later, it underwent further alterations and was relaunched as the Ideal Cinema. The Ideal was not as posh as the Regal, but it had an effective good behaviour policy. If you misbehaved, the manager would deliver a generous slap to the back of the head. Cinema programmes used to be a lot longer than they are now. Apart from the news items and trailers, you would see a cartoon, a B-film and the main feature. John M was fond of his trip to the Regal with his mates for the Saturday matinee, not least because it always entailed a one-penny sticky bun from the cash bakery on the way home. Marjorie also has fond memories of Saturday morning matinees at the Regal. If the price of a ticket was not available, or the film's certificate excluded you by reason of age, there was an alternative option. Around the back of the building were steps, which led up to the projection room. Marjorie and her friends would go up those steps where they could hear the film through the door, even if they could not see it. Then they would reenact the film amongst themselves, be they period dramas, westerns, pirate films or anything else whatsoever. Marjorie's sister was an usherette at the Regal a few years later. Alf also recollects the Saturday Crush at the Regal, where six old pence would get you in to see a Roy Rogers film. Sometimes pals could not afford the entrance price, so those who could would meander down to the toilet area, past the side of the screen and let the others in through the fire door. The opening film at the Regal on the 14th of October 1935 was Bulldog Jack with Jack Holbert and Faye Ray. When the cinema closed in 1962, the last film shown on the 17th of March was The Naked Edge, starring Gary Cooper. The ideal also closed in the early 1960s. The Regal was replaced by a series of supermarkets, the most recent being The Heron. The Ideal became a carpet warehouse, and although the original building was destroyed by fire in 1991, it was replaced with a building which has architecturally sympathetic features to the initial chapel design. Dancing was a favourite pastime for the young people of Wensfield. You could always pop up the road to the Civic Hall in Wolverhampton, where Alf met his wife Dorothy, or to the Minerva in Essington. But because of the number of works clubs that were around, there was no shortage of more local venues to choose from. The Weldless Steel Tube Club, the Willinall Radiator Club, the Drill Hall in Litchfield Road, Henry Meadows and the Ever Ready near Park Village. And the joy of many people's lives, the Wensfield Church Institute. A butcher from the top of Frederick Road named Bob White had a band there and played on Saturday nights. His theme tune was, I'll see you in my dreams, and the place was always packed out. An entrance fee of two shillings would get you in on Saturday nights, one shilling on Monday nights. Les recalls that as a youngster, a tanner, which is six old pence, a year, paid into a fund provided children with crisps and pop at the back of the building. There was a little door through which they could see the dancing. When they grew up, they became the dancers, and that's where Les met his late wife, Hilda. As well as dances, the Institute covered a variety of other needs and interests, from over-16s evening classes to snooker sessions run by Bert and Sam Adey. If a quiet pint, or even a not-so-quiet pint, was your desire, there were plenty of pubs in Wensfield, particularly in the village area. The boat, still pulling pints today, the Angel, recently closed. The Dog and Partridge, still pulling pints. Just outside of the village and still with us, the Vine. But a neighbouring pub, the Cross Guns, has gone. Gone also are the Royal Tiger, the name having been adopted by Weatherspoons, even though it occupies the old Doan's Bakery premises next door to the Tiger building. 
The Red Lion used to be opposite the Royal Tiger and not to be confused with the one in Amos Lane. The Crown, licence later transferred to the new Crown in Nordley Road, which is also now gone. The Royal Oak, gone. And the Pilecock, still serving the locality, but with childcare facilities rather than pints. Marjorie's dad used to play piano in the Angel and eventually became so popular that he played all around Wolverhampton and Bilston. He owned neither a car nor a bike. He walked everywhere, no matter how far. Bob also used to play piano in pubs and clubs. The pheasant had a nice piano, he recalls. For a while, his most regular gig was at Woden Road Club in Heathtown, where he accompanied the guest artists. For instance, David Whitfield, Matt Monroe and Malcolm Vaughan. Football was as popular amongst young adults as it was with children. Alf played for West Bromwich Albion Juniors until an injury to his ankle shattered his hopes as well as his ankle. When Ray worked at Decca Radio and TV in Neitchell's Lane, he found a route into the football team at Essington Working Men's Club. Eventually, several of his friends also joined the team and Corky Bickley became the manager. They worked their way up from Division 9 to Division 2, even playing in Belgium. Wensfield produced quite a few good footballers. Dave Wilson played for Chesterfield. Alf and Bill Cook went to Wolves. John Slevenhook was at Aston Villa. Johnny Nichols went to the Albion. Raymond Sambrook played for Manchester City. And Eddie Holding played for Warsaw.